Does anyone even know what the end of the world's really about? Revelation 9, the abyss opens, and out of the abyss come locusts upon the earth. They have tails like scorpions. They will sting men. Men will seek death, and they will not find it. They'll desire to die, but death will flee from them. It says they have a king over them, the locusts from the pit. The king over them is Apollyon, which is Satan. So Satan has an army of locusts that are going to come out of the bottomless pit in the end of the world. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Why do you think the Twin Towers was bombed on 9-11, Revelation 9, verse 11? That's why. Because the twin system from the beginning of the world is what's been used to breed the locusts from the pit. Angels come into the system, they get trapped in a host body. When they die, you go to hell, your essence, your soul is used to feed a locust from the pit. Why do you think the Vatican has a canopy? And the canopy is referred to as the flesh. The flesh is used to breed locusts from the pit. Why do you think there's locusts on the base of the canopy? Why do you think the dragon is on the base of the canopy? Why do you think there's a dead sheep made up of a bunch of angels? The sheep is us, we're the angels, we're trapped in a host body with a demon, and that demon helps us self-cannibalize, and then when we die and go to the pit, and our essence is turned into a locust, we are assimilated. That's what the word shapes of the locust means. The word shape means assimilated. So the angel gets in a host body, and that host body destroys him because he's in there with a demon, Ephesians 2, superhuman angel demon spirit. That's what's running you. Then you get converted, hopefully, and you get to go to heaven. You get converted into the Holy Spirit. That's why you have to be born again. And if you don't get born again, you go to the pit and you are assimilated by a locust. That's why the whole big dead sheep that's right there is made up of a bunch of angels. And that's why it's the male and female reproductive system. Not arguable. Look at the Vatican from above. It's a snake wearing a crown. Hello, the serpent. Who's the serpent? Satan. So they're in a building that's Satan. God's angels were warned, do not participate in making an idol or any embodiment as exemplified in Exodus 20. Now you have a building that's built in the shape of a serpent, which is Satan, and you have all the angels coming into the mouth of a serpent forming male and female reproductive systems. Those were the angels that were willing to go for the forbidden fruit and take on host bodies because that's how you get destroyed eternally through the host body system because what happens you get yoked together with a demon so the angel becomes yoked with a demon and then when that angel dies having not been converted the host body was merely a shell used to destroy him why do you think the whole altar is a bug harvesting all the angels in the form of semen? Why do you think the corner posts of the canopy are locusts down, down on the floor like they're coming out of the pit? Because that's exactly what the Bible says. I'm going to pause it. I'm going to pause it right there. Now, I want to make a point. By the way, guys, God bless you. Welcome to this. This is it. Why do you think the canopy in the Vatican that has the four corners has locusts on it? Well, what comes out of the pit? Locusts. I mean, so there it is. It's, you're looking right at it. It's right there. It can't be more obvious. Is that It's either that's a locust or not.
So if that's a locust, which I can assure you it is because the Lord used me to draw it in, it's a locust. So if it's a locust, isn't it weird that there's medical codes on your medical charts that mean that means to fully consume you by a locust? <laughs> Shit. I'm just like, guys, come on, man. It's like, oh my God. What's the whole world about? I mean, do you all know what the whole world's about? Does anyone know what the whole thing's about? I will arise above the stars of El, the Most High. It's a, it's a, it's a never-ending process. It's a never-ending thing, world without end. Satan is always going to try to rise above. It's a never-ending thing, worlds without end, world without end, world in perpetuity. I've shown it to you. But if you make it out of the system, you don't have to be in this thing again. At least I don't believe you do, according to what I've read in the scriptures. And you shall go out no more. I don't want to go out into this thing again, unless the Lord told me I need you to, to bring in a harvest, then I would. And I would trust the Lord enough to go to the desert. <laughs> okay. Now, I'm going to give you guys today, I'm... I wanted y'all to see this little shorty and just, you should watch the beginning of this two to three times. Watch and listen to everything that's being said. Look at the images on your screen. Slow it down if you have to. Watch it in little sections if you need to because this is a summation of just the simplicity of the whole thing. Ready? Let me tell you how simple this is. You have your spark of holiness, your soul. Everyone has free will. You start as an angel. You don't start, where else do you think you start? Your essence is provided by El, the Almighty God. That's who provides your essence. He's the Father of lights. Well, when you come into the world, you come into a host body that splits into two things in your essence as a male and a female opposition in the the, the body itself is attached to the pit. Just think of, you know, like the umbilical cord, you know, even in ancient cultures, they say the umbilical cord represents like your roots attached to the earth, which is true because the earth produces the host body system, produces it. It's a reptilian form of procreation. It's, it's the host body. I mean, it's produced by the earth. And then a heavenly being comes in alongside. We are resident aliens. That's what the Bible says. We are aliens alongside one of the locals. You get it? So if you're an alien alongside one of the locals, well, you live out your life. But then, you know, the tennis shoes by YG, you know, F you pay me. They want your essence. They want your soul. How do you get out of the trap? Well, if you've been made two things, you've got to be reconciled back to Christ. Shema, o Israel, for the Lord your God is one. So you've got to be made whole again in Christ. That is why there are three crosses where at Calvary where Jesus was crucified. The one in the middle is the one that can fix you. The two on the sides is you. It represents the good you and the bad you. That's why there's three crosses there. Everything is perfect. I mean, it's so perfect, it's terrifying. If you don't fear the Lord, you're a lunatic. Let me show you something. You see this? That's a locust. I love you in Christ, but I, I made sure that I, I, I put it here and I didn't color it in here. So you can look at it yourself and you can see that in the middle right here, there's the queen of heaven. There's her eye, her eye, her mouth. She's wearing a bonnet. The whole thing's a dragon. You know, but that's, now, now think about that. That's a very unique gift that the Lord gave me, the ability to see all this stuff. So I'll, I'll say it this simply. It's a yes or no answer. Is the Vatican a snake? Yes or no? If it's not a snake, then everything I said is wrong. But if it's a snake, everything I said has been delivered by the Lord God via a supernatural spiritual gift. That's why the people that call me false prophets, I'm like, call me anything but that. Because then you're casting dispersions, you're, sp you're vilifying the Holy Spirit. Because I didn't draw this stuff in. I didn't do it. I didn't draw this stuff in. <laughs> I didn't do it. The Holy Spirit did it through me. 
because <laughs> I'm not, I couldn't ever do this. Can you imagine, can you imagine just being anybody, whether, I mean, whoever the person is, it just happens to be my, can you imagine just all of a sudden you hear the Lord tell you, hey, I want you to come in at a 45 degree angle to the Vatican. You're on Google Earth and you're looking down at a building that's an upside down cross. And you're like, what the hell? The whole thing's an upside down cross. And then you hear Jonathan come in at a 45 degree angle. I want to show you something. And you do. And you come in and the whole damn thing's a snake. I mean, was that Satan telling me? <laughs> the Bible says whatever makes manifest is light. The word manifest means clear or obvious to the mind or to your eyes. Whatever makes clear or obvious to your mind or to your eyes is light. And Jesus is the light of the world. No, no wonder that the world hates me now because the world used to not hate Jonathan Cleck. Uh, when I was Johnny Skydiver Wildman, I, I had a, an entourage. <laughs> but now it's like, get away from me. It's like, I'm hated just walking out the door. Uh, anyway, so let me show you. Here's here's some things I want to show you guys. There's a folder you need to get a hold of now. Let me show you what you need to get a hold of. Here we go. Let's get into it. I, I'm going to show you some scriptures right here. You're going to do John chapter 10. You're going to do Psalm 82. You're going to do Revelation 22. And you're going to do 1 Corinthians 2. And you're going to do Galatians 3 today. So I'm going to show you some scriptures so no one can try and unseat you because it's so stupid obvious. I mean, the truth is not even obvious anymore. It's stupid obvious. It's like, oh, okay, that's not a big snake. Okay, <laughs> sure it's not. That medical code doesn't have anything to do with uh, what we're trying to do to all of humanity. No, 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 no. Isn't it weird that the medical code would actually intersect the Bible? That it would actually mean curse? You know, we're going to call, you know, we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to give you some names for the vaccine. <laughs> because, you know, there's algorithms, right? So the algorithms listen to videos. And if they hear you say vaccine, <laughs> they hear you say that. Well, then they're going to glom onto your videos and then they're going to strike you and get rid of you for showing everybody truth because you know, what's the, one of the most wicked things in the world, uh, trying to stop people from speaking truth. Do you know how wicked that is? Did you know there's a push in all governments around the world to stop people from speaking truth? Did you know in France, they passed a law that if you say anything negative about, uh, the letter M and then Rena, <laughs> capital R, and then N, uh, Rena, you know, here, let me show you. Anyway, I'm going to show you so the way I'm going to refer to some things. That way it's easy just to talk and not worry about it. Watch. Okay, let's go to, uh, let's go to uh, the folder. There's a new folder. It's called this. <laughs> this is the word. These are the words I don't want to say right here. You see that? That I'm going to call that M, Rena. Imrana. Yeah, we'll call that Imrana. See the Imrana? And see the Raptor. Favorite truck. My favorite truck. The favorite truck right there. And, okay, but Imrana is really important because they're going to be looking for that. You know why? Because even in France, they passed a law now that if you say... I mean, this, I know you're probably going to go, I don't believe you, Clint. Go look it up. In France, they pass a law. If you say anything negative about Imrana, in a, <laughs> and we'll call it a super sling, a super slinger, <laughs> a sling, a sling shot, slingshot. If you say anything bad about a Imrana slingshot, then you, uh, you go to jail for three years now jail jail can you imagine they throw you in a prison because you said something negative about an imrana <laughs> it's like what if y'all lost your freaking minds well wait a minute but if the goal is to slaughter all the sheep by a serpent race did you know there used to be this thing called the crown 
a virus. Yeah, there's this thing called the crown virus. Corona means crown. Isn't it weird? Why did they change? You know, because we're God's princes that got trapped in host bodies. And that crown, they want to take, you know, the Bible says, let no man take your crown, right? Revelation 3. Uh, because their goal is to take that crown and they don't want you to get back. That's their number one goal. To stop. So you're like a virus to them. You're the crown virus. Yeah. yeah. So it's so obvious. It's Like I said, it's not even obvious anymore. It's stupid obvious. And the people that don't want to accept it, they're living in a state of delusion. And see, the word delusion means you're not going to believe the truth, even when it's overwhelmingly obvious and you're presented with evidence that proves contrary to your beliefs. Even when you're shown all the evidence, you're not going to believe it. That's what delusion is. Have you noticed that probably 95 of the people percent of the people you try and show the truth to they're delusional what does the bible say because they had pleasure in unrighteousness god will send them strong delusion let me give them some drops in my eyes real quick they're just burn. yeah so can you imagine you're in france and you know you're talking to one of your buddies and you're like oh man i can't believe that we'll call it the serpent sleep shot the serpent sheep slaughter shot the serpents, we'll call it SSS, serpent, sheep, slaughter, the SSS, okay? That's going to be my word for the stabber jabber, okay? The, the SSS, the serpent, sheep, slaughter. What is the Vatican? What is it? It's a snake. It's a serpent. What's in the mouth of the serpent? A sheep inside the building. It, the Lord told me, Jonathan, watch this. I'm just going to do a testimony real quick. I just... I want you guys to be, to know and believe that everything I tell you is true. I mean, I can understand people being, uh, you know, questioning. It's okay to question. Say, well, how, how do I know that's true? Clack. Well, I, I get it. Well, everything I show you is going to come with so much proof. It, it's going to be hard to go against any of it because of all the proof. But I'm just going to put Dave the Wave on. So I'm calling Dave. Dave the Wave. There's Dave, I got you on speakerphone. I'm doing a video. Uh, can you can you hear me? So I'm just yeah. telling everybody. I just want everybody to understand the way this happened. So you're gonna have to speak really loud into the phone, though. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So remember way back when the Lord showed me the Vatican was a snake, and I was freaking out. And then the Lord told me, "You have to find the window inside of the Vatican where the mouth is." Do you remember that? Yeah. And do you remember what you came up with? Because you're the one that said, hey, I found this. Do you remember what you found? Yeah, the, the 3D tour. You found what? The 3D tour. The Vatican 3D tour. Okay, so now, just for the record, this is Dave the Wave, who I've worked with for years. I'm going to go to right here at uh, St. Saint Peter's. Okay, here it is. So, Dave, I'm just putting it on the screen. It says Papal Basilica of St. Peter's. And what it is, it's a 3D virtual tour. And right here at the number one spot, that's the mouth of the serpent right here, number one. And so is it, I told you, Dave, we got to find a way to find the Lord told me we have to find this window right here where the mouth of the serpent is. Is that true or not true? True. Okay. And then your solution was... You came back and you said, hey, I, I found this, and it's this 3D tour. Is that true? Yep, true. Okay, so now I'm going to click on it. So here's the mouth of the serpent right here. At one, number one, there's the sidewalk. That's the split tongue. So I'm just going to click on this right here so you guys can see it. Okay, so all right, Dave, thanks for letting me use you as a witness. Okay. Okay, bye. Okay, so now listen up, guys. So I want you to look right here. Here's the mouth of the serpent. Now, so for those of y'all now, now don't forget. Now just think about if it was you in your life before you saw this, people had come up to you and said, Hey, whatever your name is. And they said, Hey, I drew a picture of you. Let me ask you a question. Is that weird to you? Or is it just me? Do I just think that's weird and something's wrong with me? I mean, for someone to come draw a picture of me, <laughs> I'm like, Okay, 
maybe I need to wear a little bit longer shorts. <laughs> I was like, okay. No, Marcel gave me a picture. He drew on a piece of wood and he, I just, you know, I thought, wow, that's weird. Okay. Hey, thanks. You know, like a caricature, but he put a dead sheep on top of my head and a goat on the back of my head, but it was hidden in plain sight. And I was like, why in the hell would someone do that? Then Alex at Starbucks, Alex. And I told Chris Hansen, I was like, dude, I'll bet you a million dollars that Alex draws a picture of me. And when he does, he puts an image of a dead sheep on the picture that Alex, the barista, draw. I mean, isn't it? Ten Is that weird to you? Do, do you think that's super weird? Like, Johnny, why in the hell would you say something like that? Well, the reason I said that is because he would always go, hey, Johnny, how you doing? And he he would wink at me. And the Bible says those that wink the eye devise perverse things, they bring evil to pass. And in Psalm 35, 19, it says, neither let them that are my enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause. Well, that's what all these celebrities do. Obama did it in the health care ad. Hey, go get your health care. So he fits into it. He is sticking out his tongue. I mean, why would why why stick out the tongue out of your side of your mouth? Hey, well, see that whole altar right there. It's a sheep with its tongue sticking out. So, as someone's winking at you, the Bible says, "Neither let them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Neither let them wink with the eye." So, see, they're spiritual enemies of the Lord God, of God's angels. So, if someone winks at you, they're a spiritual enemy of God's angels. That's who they are. That's a manifestation of what they are. And the people are like, well, I wink. I'm like, well, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Because if that's like a normal thing you do, that's weird. Why do you wink at people? It's a manifestation mentioned in the Bible. What about the tongue sticking out of someone's mouth? That. Do you know how often I have people do that to me? Do you think that's weird? Hey, Johnny. I mean, I'm asking you, do you think that's weird? I think it's super weird. Like, hey, what's up? I have it happen all the time. It's it's normal for me to go outside my house and interact with the general public and someone go right, I'm, right in my face. That is Isaiah 57 verse 4. Against whom do you sport yourself? Like, who are you making fun of and sticking out your tongue? Are you not children of transgression? Children of the adulterer and the whore? Oh, that means you're like the serpent race. Because you're mocking the sheep by sticking out your tongue, because that's who you're killing. That's why they do it. So when I said, hey, I'll bet you a million dollars Alex sticks out his tongue, and I'm, I'm sorry, I said, I'll bet you a million dollars dollars Alex draws a picture of me. And when he does, he puts an image of a dead sheep on the, the image he draws of me. That's a super weird thing to tell anybody. Let's just be honest. Well, a week and a half later, that's exactly what he did. Hey, Johnny, I drew a picture of you. I was like, oh, wow. Hey, Chris, check it out. He drew a picture of me. Uh, do you think I went and told Alex, hey, Alex, would you draw a picture of me and put a dead sheep on my face? Do you I'm telling you, no, no, I didn't do anything. I just walked in and he said, hey, I drew a picture of you, Johnny. And he put a dead sheep on my face with the sheep's tongue sticking out. I'll show it to you in just a minute. Well, that's the exact same thing as the largest altar in the world. The largest altar in the world is a sheep with its tongue sticking out. Well, did you know the same guys that built this church, the same entity that built this whole building that's a serpent, it's slaughtering a sheep. It's right here. Look, the serpent. The Lord told me, Jonathan, go in and find the window. There's the window. So on the outside of the building, it's a serpent. But the window right here is a dead sheep. You see the sheep? There it is. This is a virtual. That's a sheep. There's the eye. There's the eye. Nostril, nostril, teeth, tongue sticking out. There's the ear. There's the ear. But what's the sheep made of? It's made up of God's angels. Look, those are angels. Well, what's going on with the angels? Wow, there's tons of them. All these little things are angels' faces, but they're coming in. Look at the grown-up girls. Come to us. Look, look at them reaching for them. Come to us. See here, come to us. We want this. We are life to their system. 
See, we're the life to their system, their desolate system. Come on in, yes, yeah, so we can all have our serpent life. Come on in. So see, that's a dead sheep right there. But who's the dead sheep? The dead sheep are the angels. Therefore, sans ergo, that means if Johnny is having people draw pictures of me, giving me a picture of a dead sheep on the picture of me, that means they're hunting me. What are they hunting? What's the only thing you own, truly own? Your soul. That's the only thing you own. That's the only thing you have to, you have free will over your soul. You can say no. Like when they tell people, I want you to take this mark in your right hand or your forehead, you can say no, I'm not doing it. And if they say, well, then you got to come with us or you gotta, that's when you decide what you're going to do. I don't know. I mean, what are you going to do? I don't know. Piss off? I'm just saying. But when, when they told a bunch of people to take the, the SSS, right? The SSS, Serpent Sheep Slaughter. The Vatican's a serpent, isn't it? What's it doing? It's slaughtering a sheep by eating it. There it is. I mean, it's a serpent slaughtering a sheep. Isn't it weird? There's this thing called the crown virus that they changed to serpent sheep slaughter. <laughs> That's kind of convenient. Isn't it weird? There's a medical code now that it's following you in your medical chart that you didn't get the, what are we going to call it? <laughs> the serpent sheep slaughter slingshot. Yeah. Serpent Sheep Slaughter Slingshot. Oh, S S S S S. Serpent Sheep Slaughter Slingshot. <laughs> there you go. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And it's with Imrana. Remember, you know what Imrana does? It changes your dinara forever. It's never the same again. So you'll never be on a molecular level, on a Dinrana level, you'll never be the same ever again. You can, there's no going backwards. You can, so if you're in a host body system that's a serpent race bred with a sheep race, right? Well, what if they could give you a Imrana thing that would make sure there's no way out of the system? Uh, the, the system. So the two, you know, the LGBTQ 2s now 2s two spirit isn't it weird they wanted to add two spirit to the whole thing why isn't lgbtq enough but you want to add two spirit to it well that's funny because the bible says before you get converted you have the spirit of the world which is a superhuman angel demon spirit so that's the way to destroy you, by the way, because if they get the angel in the body that's already attached to the pit, because the host body's attached to the pit, you can have one, but it's attached to the pit. And there isn't a demonic attachment to your own worm. That's why Justin Timberlake has his own his own twin in the trunk of the car being eaten by a worm. Or do you think that's just an artistic expression? <laughs> no angels on the dance floor. It's funny you use the word angels. No angels on the dance floor. It's kind of funny that I showed you that that place where Jacob called, he called it uh, the place of two camps, and it's angels and dancers. You know, like Justin Timberlake, angel comes down to the dance floor. Get it? The angel comes down to the dance floor. He dances around, and they cannibalize him. No angels on the dance floor. And then his doppelganger that got cannibalized is in the trunk of the car with worms eating him. Do you think that's just some artistic expression? Or do you think that's the angel of the bottomless pit giving you the bird because he just murdered you? Which one? <laughs> it's like, oh, I don't know. Oh, fuck you, click. You're a false prophet. Okay. All right. <laughs> just whatever. It's like, okay. Everyone's entitled to their own... You know, you, you're in control of your mouth and what you say. You're, I'm in control of mine. I, I think every now and then uh, using an F-bomb to show just how important something really is in a certain way kind of matters. Have you ever analyzed what it means, F-U? 
go F yourself? Have you ever analyzed it? I have. I'm like, what a weird thing to say to somebody. Tell them to go F themselves. That's kind of weird. That's kind of what happened at the beginning of the world. Parthenogenesis. Let's see, because a reptilian form of procreation. So a female prototype produced other proto, other females self-fertilized, and then they had young, and then they self-fertilized and had young, and then there's a population, but then they're able to transgender. So at some point, one of the males from the clutches had sexual intercourse. So a mother that produced an offspring that transgendered into male, you know, like a Komodo dragon, because Komodo dragons do it. There's other types of selenerates that do it, insects do it. So they produced a host body, and one of those host bodies that was a male had to have sex with his mom or his sister. I'm just saying. I mean, if you analyze it, I'm just analyzing it. So parthenogenesis, that's what happens. It's incestual. It's an ancestral race. Isn't that what Nimrod did? Wasn't Nimrod a great hunter before the Lord and he was a really bad dude? And didn't him and Samarimus do the naughty? Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. It, it, it's kind of weird. It's kind of like they worship that stuff. Have you noticed? Well, did you notice the Vatican's a snake? Did you notice it's birthing another snake? That's Parthenogenesis. That's one serpent giving birth to another one. And they worship a female deity. They worship female energy because the pit that's going to start that female thing. Because the waters moved over the abyss. Remember the abyss. Huh. So, you know, have you analyzed all this? Have you really gone into the folders that this guy, Jonathan Kleck, gave you and analyzed the data? Because I have, and it's conclusive. It's not even close to arguable. It's it's so conclusive, it's stupid obvious. Okay, now, now that I've kind of got that out, we're going to call it Imrana, right? Imrana. Did you know that, do you all know what the word raptor means? Did you know they took, they changed the dictionary? Did you know the word raptor means a thief and a rapist and a robber? Yeah, they changed the dictionary a while back. It's interesting because the Bible says, um, whoever comes up some that doesn't enter the door by the sheepfold, but comes up, comes up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But the word robber in is actually means raptor or raptor. A raptor is a thief and a robber. Did you know that? Yeah, let me see if I can pull that up real quick. So one in Wikipedia, son, like the root of the word uh, uh, is rape. See, rendered as rape, raptio, is Latin term among other meanings, senses of taking, uh, large scale abduction of women, kidnapping for marriage, um, sexual slavery, um, and also means a robber and a plunderer. So a robber and a plunderer, uh, this one doesn't want to populate for some reason, not, no big surprise, but you can see it right there. A thief, robber, plunderer, and then raptio, uh, a rapist, uh, to rape and ravage. Um, uh, do you find that odd that there's sexual uh, imagery involved in all this stuff that this guy Kleck's shown you? Do you think he's just a total perv? <laughs> Maybe. No, I, I'm serious. I mean, I'm just kind of trying to make light of it. But do you think that this guy Kleck just wants to see penises and vaginas everywhere? Penis! Vagina! I mean, or do you think that it's female and male reproductive systems everywhere because the system that the serpent started is all about sex? That's what the whole thing's really about. Did you know there's a movie uh, called Sausage Party? Yeah, Sausage Party. Seth Rogen. You should watch it. It's pretty enlightening. It's just saying. Just give it a shot. It's going to be tough, but just go watch it. Anyway, um, so what I'd like to do now, just for a minute, just to kind of, you know, I'm trying to shake you up a little bit because 
I'm going to go really into the SSSSS, what Serpent Sheep Slaughter Slingshot thing, because what they used, there's like, an, there's, there's two forms of Imrana, two forms. There's Isoform 1 and Isoform 2. And, you, and so you can go look them up. Let me show you how to look them up and read about them. You can go to uh, Wikipedia. Let me see here. Uh, let's see. I think I probably have it. There's a Parthenogenesis folder. And you might want to just go to Wikipedia and look at this. So, you know, the word raptor means rapist and to take, you know, to take. Um, but see, yeah, I want you to read this yourself. I mean, just that's... Uh, See that word right there? There it is. And this is, see that 1303? That's important, but what's really more important is this. There's two of these forms. There's two forms of Imranas. And they have been identified, and they decided to name one 1335. That's called Isoform 1 in 1177. That's called Isoform 2. Uh, let me show you something that's kind of interesting. You see how it's shaped like the letter V? Don't you think that's kind of interesting that the adapter, it's called the adapter. And what it is, it's signal transduction. So if you go down and you read at the bottom of this box right here, if I slide down here, signal transducing. So uh, a signal transduction pathway Okay, so it's important without getting into like a crazy biology lesson. I actually learned about a lot of this stuff when I was in college. Um, what's interesting is what if you were able to block one signal? You know, you just, you know, like, you know, you have a superhuman angel demon system going on inside of you, right? Okay, well, if the whole earth is about a reptilian form of a being, we'll call it a being. B E I N G, a being. And that being inhabits a host body like the house of Baal. We'll call it the house of Baal. Because if Satan starts a host body, then it's a house for him to be in, yes or no? So if he starts a, a host body system using female energy, then that is a house of Baal, isn't it? I mean, is that does that sound just pretty obvious to you well what if he's able to lure an angel into the house of Baal which is the forbidden fruit you're not supposed to take on an Im did you know the bible says you shall not make unto yourself any graven image or any likeness of anything in the heavens the earth or the water under the earth or the waters under the earth wow what waters under the earth do you know the word waters means semen isn't that weird there's a large altar with a big it's a big snake, and there's a bunch of angels melting into semen, and there's a penis and a vagina. I mean, that's weird, right? Freak out. Uh huh. Well, if you're the angel of the abyss, and you're going to make a host body system, but see, you know that's the only way to slaughter angels, because angels are too powerful unless they hand over their free will, and you get them in a host body system. Now they're free game, aren't they? They sure are, and nothing can stop their destruction if you have them in a dualistic system where you make a, you know, an opposing force that's going to be kind of like a form of alchemy to transduce that angel in like a transmutation circle type thing. You know, you get the angel in there, and then you just work him his whole life because he's in a box. Put the angel in the box with the demon, and let's see what happens. Well, it's going to destroy the essence of that angel, and when the box no longer functions, well, that demon's holding on to him and just takes him on down to the pit. And now you turn an angel into what? Well, what's in the pit? Locust. See, have you ever just crunched the data? I have. I've crunched it, eh, I don't know, 20 years. <laughs> Done a lot of crunching. Uh huh. And it's so conclusive, it's stupid. Why are there big locusts on the corner posts of the canopy in the Vatican? See, the canopy, the word in Ezekiel, thou art the anointed cherub. 
that covereth. Okay, that's who Lucifer is. He's the anointed cherub that covereth. That means the word covereth, the word is actually a canopy. The word says canopy, and it means to cover with flesh. Can you believe that? So Lucifer is the anointed cherub that covers with flesh. But see, that's the forbidden fruit. So wait a minute. Well, if you get in there, so what does that have to do with you? <laughs> well, where, what's your essence? What's your soul all about? Where did you get your soul? Who gave it to you? What is your soul? Well, so the Jews, they, they call it a spark of holiness and that your spark of holiness is exiled to what's called the kelepot, the kelepot. And the way they refer to the kelepot is a peel, a shell, or a husk, your host body. That's how, so you're a spark of holiness, but you've been exiled into your body. See, doesn't the Bible say you are exiles? Live out your life as exiles. You're a foreigner and a sojourner. So the only way to get back home is to be re, you got to be cleaned of the demon thing that's destroying you because you're in the box with the demon. The box is your body. And see, the, your whole life, you go do stuff, you have sex outside the covenant of marriage, you lie, you cheat, you steal. Maybe, you know, some girl told you, oh, I'm getting divorced. My husband's a real jerk. You're just the greatest guy in the world. I just want to be with you. And she's smoking hot. And you're just like, oh, okay, well, you didn't realize you're just committing adultery every time you jump in the rack with her and you're just logging up a tally down in the pit and the little worm that's attached to you is like got you on that got you on that that's called being under the law because see your body's under the law and cursed is everyone who is under the law so what if you were able to take the law and destroy the law itself and the only way to do that is you have to be born again of a supernatural spirit that would be a way to do it wouldn't it well what about the God of heaven, El, the almighty God? What if he were to come into the system in a body like you have and say, you know what? I'm going to buy these guys back. I'm going to live a sinless life. I'm the only one that can buy every back, anyone back that shows he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And he's the one that has the keys of hell and the keys of death. And he's the one that can give you back your life. Would you want it? That's what I'm here for. That's what Jonathan Kleck is here to help you do. By showing you the word of God and the perfection of it. And if you'll just listen and just watch and just look at the folders. I have folders that are more valuable than all the money in the world. And it's all been done for you. I'm getting a little frustrated because I don't think a lot of people understand what it really is. I mean, it's the most valuable information in the world. There's no more valuable information. The Vatican's a snake. That should change the entire freaking world immediately. That means everyone that's going there that doesn't know it's a snake because there's that there's those people that know it's a snake. But what about they're taking their little kids, their sons and their daughters and they're taking them in there to worship they think Jesus. How can it be Jesus if they're inside of a snake? <laughs> Why are they praying to the Virgin? I used to pray to the Virgin because I was a little good Catholic boy. I was taught to pray to the Virgin. Get on your knees, light a candle, look up at the statue of the Virgin, say a prayer for someone you care about, and see, you think you're doing something good. I thought I was doing something good. I got to light a candle. Fire! <laughs> got to play with fire. You know, hey, got a little play with a little fire, got to put a couple dollars in the poor box, you know, I felt good about myself, said a prayer for someone I cared about, you know, I was there with my mom, it, it just seemed right, it seemed good, but then as I grew up, I was like, wait a minute, this is pure hypocrisy, I'd go into confession, which I thought was really weird, and say, yeah, I just don't feel right about some of this, I lied, I did this, yeah, whatever, I've been having sex with this girl. She said, you know, she was getting divorced. She lied. She's not getting divorced. Uh, go, so, go say five Our Fathers and five Hail Marys and you'll be fine. Wait, do I keep sleeping with her? Or what do I do? 
Is that what I do? I just, yeah, I'll see you in a month. Yeah, I'm still sleeping with her. Oh, okay. Well, you know, say five Hail Marys, five Our Fathers, you'll be fine. That seems a little hip hop. Like, that doesn't seem right, does it? <laughs> anyway, so let me show you a couple things, guys. Pay attention. See this? This thing right here. Imrana is Raptor. I wonder why they just didn't call it Raptor right here. C R P T O R. Why did they just put the letter A in there? Because they said it is it is also known as that Raptor, but why didn't they just put the A in there and call it what it is? Which is a rapist, a thief, and a someone that takes. Huh. I don't know. Well, let me show you something. Could y'all get your Bibles out for a second? Now, now I part of what I when I show people the truth of the scriptures, there's there's inevitably, and I've seen it for decades, there's always a couple fringe super lunatics that that they 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 just can't handle the reality of the truth. It's probably because they're in so deep. And they know that the trap they set has become their own. And inside of them, they're probably so filled with fear because they know how wicked they really are. And to think that the trap that they laid is actually their own trap, that's got to be horrifying. Because if I know the truth and the trap and I'm showing it and see it convicts them, then they live in complete terror for what's coming. Here you go. Let me show you something. Now, I want I want you all to read these words and say them out loud because, see, the Jews were going to stone Jesus. For a good work, we stone thee not. But for speaking evil, the word blasphemy means to vilify, to speak evil. And because thou being a man, makest thyself God. So that's why they said they were going to stone Jesus. Okay, but Jesus said, I want you to say, can you say these words out loud? Jesus answered them, quote, is it not written in your law, I said, ye are gods? Can you read these words right here? I have said, ye are gods. Okay. And all of you are children of the Most High, but you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Let's go back and read that one again. Jesus answered them and said, is it not written in your law, I said, Ye are gods. Well, it is. It's written right here. It says, I have said, ye are gods. See, it is written in their law. So he's, Jesus is talking to the Jews. Is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. And right here it is. See, I have said, ye are gods. And all of you are children. So one of these scriptures is John chapter 10, verse 34. Jesus said, is it not written in, in your law? I said, ye are gods. And he was right. See, it's written right here in Psalm 82, verse 6, I've said you are gods. And then he says in Psalm 82, and all of you are children of El the Most High, but you shall die like men. So yes or no, if everyone is a God, ye are God. See, that's your spark of holiness right there. That's your spark of holiness that's exiled in a host body, but you're going to die like men. See, you are gods, you have a spark of holiness. That was given to you by the Most High. See, you are God. You got a spark of holiness. And you're all children of El, the Most High God. So you are all gods, but you're children of the Most High. But you're going to die like men. So you've been exiled into a host body. You shall fall like one of the princes. Now, here's the part I want to put to rest. A lot of people that think they know the scriptures don't know their ass from a hole in the ground. So... I'm going to help them see the difference right now, hopefully. And maybe they will relent and they'll say, wow, that makes so much sense. I can't argue with it because the Bible says it. Therefore, you would have to argue with the Bible to try and argue with what I'm going to show you right now. So did Jesus say, it's a yes or no. Your own scriptures say, I have said ye are gods. Did Jesus 
say that in the Bible, yes or no. John chapter 10, verse 34, Jesus said, is it not written in your law? I've said to your gods. Did he say that? Well, you're reading it. So yes, he did. So there it is. Uh, and then did he say the next sentence in you're going to read it out loud, hopefully. And then he says, if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scriptures cannot be broken. Did he say that? Well, it's right here in verse 35. So he's talking about Psalm 80, 82. Is it Psalm 82? Let's see. Yep, Psalm 82, verse 6. So Jesus said, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are God. So yes or no, did Jesus tell everyone that you're a God, yes or no? Well, you are. That's what your spark of holiness is. What do you think your soul is? That's your essence. You're a God. You're an angel. Did you know gods are angels, are magistrates, are judges? They're all synonymous. They're all equally the same. If you're an Elohim, you're an angel, you're a magistrate. Let me show you that. We're going to go to the Galatians 3 in just a minute, but we're going to go to Psalm 82. Psalm 82, because you, we're going to be in Galatians 3, because, see, we're going to, we're going to be judging angels here pretty soon, and you need to know why we're going to judge angels and who the angels are that we're going to judge. See, Psalm 82, verse 5 says, They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. Let me ask you a question. Who is they? Who? Who is they? He said, they know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. Who's he talking about? The wicked? He says, all the foundations of the earth are out, of course. And then he tells you who... Everything you need to know about everything. Then he says, I have said ye are gods. Right here. So here you go. See the word gods? Yes or no? Does it say Hebrew word 430 lowercase? Let me change it to a different color that's easier to see. Let's do light blue. Does it say ye are gods? And does that say Elohim? Yes or no? There's Hebrew word 430. I'll change it to the same color. So the answer is, Yes, and Jesus was letting us know that the scriptures tell us that we're God. See it? I have said you are gods right there. You are Elohim. See, you are Elohim. But it's little g because big G Elohim is many in one. Think about the back of the dollar bill. E pluribus unum. You take a whole trillion bunch of little sparks of light and you put them into one big ball, and that's Elohim together. And then think of many that make up one. Okay, e pluribus unum, many out of many out of one. Okay, now watch this. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of El Yon, the Most High. But you shall die, causatively to kill, to be put to, worthy of death yes or no destroy does it say that we are gods we're all children of el the most high god but you're going to die like men adam yes or no well that's what it just said so jesus was referring to it telling the jews hey guys why are you going to stone me i just said i'm the son of god whoop de doo y'all are don't your own scriptures say I have said you're gods, and if the word of God came unto them that are called gods, what's the big deal? Why, you can't stone me. Say ye of him that the Father is sanctified and sin into the world, that I blaspheme because I said I am the Son of God? What? He's telling them your, your argument doesn't make any sense because y'all are gods according to your own scripture. <laughs> Well, did you know the Bible says that we're going to judge angels? Did you know that? 
do you know why we're going to judge? See, a lot of people are like, oh, angels, call you liar. Are you an angel? I'm an angel. I know I'm an angel. I'm a redeemed angel because I got converted. So now that I got converted, what get what happens to all of us that got converted? We get what? We get to arise and go back home, don't we? And by virtue of the fact that we got converted and another angel, because everyone's an angel, if you don't get converted, the ones that get converted are judging you. It's the most stupid, obvious thing in the world. It's like, duh, you mean you didn't you didn't take the free gift of Jesus on the cross? You didn't get your two made whole? Dude, are you crazy? Well, that means because we did, we, we judge you guys because we got made whole again. So by virtue of the fact that we're converted and you're not converted, that's not good. Do you see how simple it is? Now, you want to see pictorial absolute proof? You want to see the scriptures absolute proof? Here's absolute proof. So Jesus said again, Is it not written in your law, I said you're God, and the scriptures cannot be broken? There it is. Psalm 82, I've said you're God's, and all of you are children of the Most High, but you're all under a death sentence, and you got bodies because you're a spark of holiness inside of a host body kelepot, and you're going to fall like one of the princes. And then it says, Arise, O God, Elohim, judge the earth. Do you know why? Because when Jonathan Cleck and anyone else that gets converted, when you get converted, Christ in you, which is El, the Almighty God that bought you back, Christ in you, is going to judge every single person that didn't get Christ in you, which is everybody that doesn't accept the free gift of God. Do you understand? So when go click, you don't know what you're talking about. You're the ones that don't know what you're talking about. I know exactly what the Lord showed me. I It's proven. Now let's go to uh, some scriptures here. Now let's look at first Corinthians two, first Corinthians Chapter 2, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. See the, the word God, it's capital, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. And the word know there is very important. It's hinosko. It means to know absolutely. Because they are spiritually discerned. See that? Okay. You see my hat? It says 350. I wear it because of that. Because when you've been converted, the truth lives in you now. And you have the mind of Christ. Because ready? You were double-minded. Cleanse your hearts, you double-minded. Double-minded of what? Well, what was the spirit running you before you got converted? A superhuman angel demon? Double-minded, angel, demon. You were double-minded. But you got to cleanse your heart by turning back to God and saying you're sorry. Turn and face him and say you're sorry. This is not facing God. This is facing God. Turn back to him and admit who you are and what you've done. Because you're double-minded. That's what the host body got you, see? Your flesh gave you an extra consciousness mind attached to the pit. But when you get converted on a crino, when you vigorously judge from down to up, then you're able to see the truth. And guess what? You have the mind of Christ. Do you believe me? That's what the scriptures say. It says right here, but every man receiveth not the things, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them absolutely because they are spiritually discerned on a credo but he that is spiritual see the word right there judges that's actually the word on a credo again he on a credo's all things yet he himself jonathan and company is judged of no man isn't it fascinating how many crazy channels 
people were determined, I'm judging you, Jonathan Clegg, you evil false prophet. I'm not judged by you. <laughs> it's like, what? I'm judged of no man. No man can judge me. I've been converted. So anyone that thinks they're judging you, all you did was condemn yourself. So you condemned yourself. So that's what it means. Now watch. For they are foolish in the Son to him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual, on a crino all things. Yet he himself is on a crino of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? Now, this is really important, because now think of all the people that have written hate to you. I don't know if you guys have been out preaching what the Lord showed me. Man, I get a lot of hatred. They freaking hate me. Jonathan Clegg's a liar, a false prophet. He's going to burn in hell. Oh, my God. Lots of serious hatred, man. Whole channels dedicated to it for 20, since I started. I'm like, why are you guys so intent on your weird hate parties, huh? Why would you just go do your life? Go do your thing. You know, go go do videos and, and try and bring people into the kingdom instead of going and starting hate channels. That's kind of weird, isn't it? Did you know you reap what you sow? So if you're like, Sowing hate, you'll reap hate. That's the law of the harvest. You reap what you sow. So, watch this. Watch what it says here. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? Well, let me ask you a question. Do you think that someone that's not converted should be instructing you if you've been converted? See, the thing is, if you've been converted, you no longer have a superhuman angel, demon, spirit, cleanse your hearts, you double-minded. So you get a heart cleanse, and now you have the mind of Christ because you don't have a superhuman angel and a demon mind. You don't have a demonic mind trying to, to run the whole show all the time. It doesn't mean you won't fall into temptations. It doesn't mean you won't fall on your face a few times, but you'll get up and you'll keep going to want to please God. You'll go through your trials, but watch this. But we have the mind of Christ. Do you believe that? Do you believe we have the mind? I know we do. How else could I show you the Vatican's a snake? How else could I show you that the largest altar in the world is really a dead sheep? And it's a bunch of angels. It's a serpent sheep slaughter, which happens to be a very popular thing that's gone around in the past couple of years. Uh, yeah, into a super serpent sheep slaughter slingshot i mean why why did they keep giving it to everybody when they found out it didn't work why tucker carlson asked that question he's like well if they knew it didn't stop you know you getting uh this thing well to continue to give it to people would just be purely evil well wouldn't it well, of course it would it'd be sick it'd be twisted well, who all is behind it? Well, all the governments of the world. So what would that tell you? Let's analyze the data. Could it be Satan? Yeah. Could it be his takeover of the world that's really his with a bunch of sheep that are just trapped in it? Didn't he tell Jesus, which is the main sheep? Isn't Jesus the main sheep? Isn't he the lamb that was slaughtered from the foundation of the world? It's a yes or no. So the main sheep came into the system in a host body, and his name was Jesus, and didn't Satan say, hey, these are all my, all authority has been given to me in this place. This is my show right here. And if you'll bow down and worship me, I'll give it all to you. Yes or no? Did he say that to the head sheep? Yes or no? Well, the head sheep is my boss. That's who I answer to. I answer to the head sheep. Well, so if, if the head sheep has converted me, then I have the mind of the head sheep my my thought process and the things he shows me are because he is my consciousness now. He's taken over my consciousness. Okay, does it mean I don't have battles? No. But he, I no longer, the, the flesh no longer has dominion over me. You know, like dominion voting machines, that there's nothing to look at here. They're all totally legit. You got to know that, right? What was the last Jurassic Park movie? Eh, dominion. <laughs> so stupid. Okay, really? But we have the mind of Christ. Let's go there for just a minute. So let's go to 1 Corinthians 2. 
right here, 1 Corinthians 2, and let's go way down here, and it says, but the natural man, you know, like the Genesis 1 man that has the Ruach Elohim, okay, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, look at the word Spirit, capitalized, the word Spirit is Divine God, Christ, Holy Spirit, because it's capitalized, but when it's not capitalized, it's superhuman. You got to go from being superhuman to divine. So you got to be born out of superhuman, and that is an angel and a demon. That's what the superhuman is. It's an angel and a demon. Or you got to be divine, God, Christ, Holy Spirit. So you got to get converted from a two-party angel-demon system to a singularity, God, Christ, Holy Spirit. And see, the crosses at Calvary where Jesus was crucified was a physical representation of the system showing that, see, Johnny got split one Johnny over there and one over there, but Christ in the middle reconciling both to God, the good Johnny and the bad Johnny through the cross, making one new man from the two. That's his goal. His purpose was to create one new man from the two because the whole world you have your own evil twin just like justin timberlake and the end of that is you get eaten by a worm just like justin timberlake it's like it's like so obvious okay here we go ready here we go the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of god for their foolishness unto him neither can he know them the word know is to know absolutely and the only way you can know it absolutely is by being on the rock because when you turn the world the opposite direction you see the truth and you're on the rock and no one can move you because no one can change the whole world in front of you you've already inverted the world and you see the truth why is the vatican a snake well because it's a snake could you see it before you got converted no uh what about why is the virgin a dead sheep well because i inverted it could you see it before you got converted no okay well why am i compelled to turn the whole world upside down all of a sudden well because i got converted that's why that's what converted means okay ready neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned see that number discerned on a Crino, see it? Now, here's a word you really need to know. Ana. It means up. Ana is up. Properly up. Repetition, like clack. Intensity, like clack. And reversal, which is my goal to get you reversed and get you back in the good graces of our Father. So, because they are spiritually discerned, non physically, spiritually. Okay, that's just a major ass whooper. Just had a horrible thing happen. Ah, oh, jeez. I mean, I don't know what to do. Okay, just had a an audio issue. I there's another hour of audio now missing. I'm gonna revise this and I'm gonna redo it. All right, guys, listen. I. I just, I just finished and uh, there's like another hour and the last, the last part of this is what I've been leading up to this whole video to get to this point where I'm going to do the serpent sheep slaughter slingshot thing. And then all of a sudden, well, I lost all my audio. It's all gone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this part right here. I love you in Christ. I'm going to leave this right here. Uh, I'm going to let it play. Just please. I'm, I'll call this part one. Part two, if you've watched this part, part two is going to come this evening. I'm just going to pause this. I got to take care of a couple things and I'm going to come back and I'm going to finish this part. But the serpent sheep slaughter slingshot is the part that's coming next, which is, yeah, it was really good. I was like, dude, this is really good. That's okay. I still got it all. It's all here on my desktop. I know exactly what to do. Um, so, but I don't want to, I can't just stop and redo it right this second. My brain's shot. Anyway, I love you in Christ. Just hold the phone. Um, go to this folder, though. Y'all need to go to this folder. What's this? You have to go check out this folder. Okay, so go look at Genesis 3.22. You'll see this bright pink. 
Look at this word infold. It's so important. You'll see it again. It's very, very important. It's Genesis 3.22. But this is the folder right here. It's called Imrana and Ripter SSSSSS. And then we're going to go through this uh, right here. We're going to go through this part right here. And I'm going to tie it together to all the Imrana stuff. It's all tied together. All of it. Why do you think the Vatican has a freaking locust? Why do you think there would be on your medical code the word to f like fully consume by a locust? That's what the goal is of the whole world for Satan's locust race to consume the sheep race. That's it. What's in the pit? Locust. Justin Timberlake. What's in the trunk of the car? His twin beating by what? A worm from the locust. So, I mean, yeah, it's like stupid, but isn't that fascinating? I did an hour and it just got, I just lost an entire hour. I went to render this video just now. And as it was rendering the last hour, you saw where the phone call came in on there. From that point on, all the audio was gone. Yep. I'm going to keep going. I'll get it back up. I love you guys. It's crazy.